ISO.org is the premier online Bible school developed by Perry Stone. ISO.org has dozens of courses, hundreds of lessons, and thousands of students all over the world. Sign up today. Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. Well, it's very obvious if you're watching the Manifest telecast right now that I'm not coming to you from Cleveland, Tennessee. I'm coming to you from Jerusalem, Israel. It's an overcast sky today. It's very kind of cool, but this is the kind of weather I like. And I'm standing at the ruins of the uh, southern part of the temple from Jesus' day. You know, right behind me are columns that were actually standing at the time of Christ and the disciples. And we're standing not far from it, some steps that they actually went into the temple uh, back in the time that we read of the New Testament and the four Gospels. I want, to, I want to present something to you today on the telecast that's a little bit different than what I normally do. I'm going to be telling some stories and mixing it in with scriptures from the Bible. One of our young person, uh, one of the young persons that we brought with us, I asked them a moment ago, what would you like to hear me teach on? And they said, what are we going to be doing in heaven? You don't hear a lot about what are we actually going to be doing when we get there. Now, what I'm going to do is make a statement here, and then we're going to try to prove that statement and then add to it. Everybody is going to go to heaven, but not everybody is going to stay. Now, what do I mean by that? Here's what I mean. Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. Every living person that has lived on the planet from anywhere in the world is going to one day have to go to heaven. That's right. You're going to go to heaven and be at one or two judgments. The first judgment that we know occurs in heaven is found in Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. Now, this is the judgment of the righteous. This would be the judgment of those, for example, that have, are the dead in Christ. All the way back in the time of the crucifixion of Jesus until the present time when the Lord is, is you know, coming for the church. Now, these are called the dead in Christ. And the dead in Christ are all of those who died in Christ from the moment of his resurrection till the time we call the rapture. Those will be, if they're dead, their soul and spirit is now in paradise in the third heaven. And 1 Thessalonians 4 says Jesus will bring them with him at the time of what we call the rapture. And we meet them in the air. Those of us who are living on earth are changed from mortal to immortality and we meet them in the air. So we will go to heaven for a period of time. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now, the second thing I want to tell you is this, which is very important. Everybody who is a sinner who is now in hell is going to heaven, but they're not going to get to stay. And that's why I made the statement a moment ago. Everybody's going to heaven, but not everybody's going to stay. These individuals from the Old Testament, the New Testament era, and all the thousands of years between the New Testament, whether it's 2,000 years, 2,050 years, who knows? All those that die in the tribulation, all those in the millennial reign who did not accept the covenant with Almighty God, that's the old covenant, and the new covenant through the Lord Jesus Christ, that's what we're under now. If you died a sinner, an unbeliever, a doubter, a skeptic, and the Bible tells you in the book of Revelation, the individuals that cannot inherit the kingdom, the judgment you will have to go to will be at the end of a 1,000 year reign of Christ. And watch this, this is pretty wild. Everybody on earth, if there's, if there's billions of people during that thousands of years, and there will be human people who survive the tribulation, who will repopulate the earth, and the earth will go back into billions of people. But when the time comes, at the end of the thousand years, Satan is loose from the abyss, and he comes forth to Jerusalem to try one more time to destroy it, and Jesus just stops it cold. Then there's two things going on here at one time. At the end of that thousand years, Peter said the earth is going to be renovated by fire and all the elements will melt with fervent heat, meaning the planet we're now on, this planet, 
When God says in Isaiah, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and then he says in the book of Revelation through the apostle John, I make all things new, and behold, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. It's a renewed heaven and a renewed earth. And the whole elements are going to melt with fire. And this earth is going to be completely burned and consumed. In fact, it's going to be burnt with such fire globally. Now, this is not a war. This is God doing it. It's going to be burnt with such fire globally that John says, after this happens, there's no more sea. It literally evaporates the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, and then the New Jerusalem, and this is at the end of the thousand year reign, after the great white throne judgment, the New Jerusalem will come out of heaven onto the earth. And the New Jerusalem's foundation is 1,500 miles across and this way. And we calculated one time, Charlie, our editor, might be able to find this picture where we drew out that if the New Jerusalem were to come down on the United States, where would it sit? And you can see we squared out 1,500 miles. It would go from Maine to Florida and from the coast of Virginia on the east side all the way toward Colorado. You're talking about a massive size. All right, now, that's kind of the flow of events. But let's talk for a moment about not just it's appointed to die and then the judgment. Let's talk about this idea of heaven itself. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, I know that's difficult for a lot of people to comprehend because people say to themselves, where did God come from? God had to have an origin somewhere. And it's amazing. Now, watch what I'm about to say. It's amazing how evolutionists will talk about how that there was a cell that hit a cell that created an amoeba that went in the water and grew legs and eyes popped out and all of a sudden human beings got here. Okay, now these people who are university professors teaching science and telling the youth that cells got together, how did it happen? We don't know, it's a mystery. And when they got together, they created a living thing. How did it happen? We don't know, but it's a mystery. And one of these days, it took billions of years, and I'm here, I'm here, and I got eyes, and I can think, and I can reason, I have compassion, I have love, and I got a brain, and I got a body. We just happened to get here. Watch, how can they believe that and then look at you and say, we don't believe God exists? Because how could God exist? Where did he come from? Or where did we come from? We did not come from an amoeba in the middle of a lake that dropped its legs and grew legs and grew eyeballs. We did not do that. We have a creator. So it just really amuses me how skeptics can teach evolution and everything came from nothing at some point. And yet we look at God whom we say preexisted and they can't believe that. So I'm not here to prove or disprove or try to, let me say it this way, convince you that God exists. But I will tell you what the Word of God does teach. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, in the original heavens, there were no men. The only thing that existed in the original heavens were angels that also God created. Now, the book of Job will indicate that there's two types of angel categories at the beginning of creation. God said to Job, where were you? When I laid the foundation of the earth and stretched out the cornerstone thereof, when the sons of God sang together and the morning stars shouted for joy. Sons of God, ben Elohim in Hebrew, are also mentioned in Job where it says the sons of God came before the throne of God and Satan came among them. These are angels. It's a certain type of created angel. But then there are the morning stars. Now, Lucifer, the name Lucifer uh, in the King James translation of the Bible is a Hebrew word for morning star. Satan was the leader of the morning stars, a group of angels that are connected to shouting for joy or worship. Now, without going into detail, because I don't want to get sidetracked, Lucifer or Satan was, it's believed to be by scholars, and they use different verses to indicate this, mostly in the book of Ezekiel, that Satan originally was a sort of a worship leader. He had vials in him. He had pipes in him. He had tab tabrets in him. This is in the Bible. And so he could produce some kind of creative music or sound perhaps in heaven. And when he fell from heaven, he took one third of the, the, the angels with him that were connected to his leadership. And those are what's called in 2 Peter 2, 4 and also the book of Jude, fallen angels. So there is 
one third, and we find this in Revelation chapter 12. So one third of the angels followed Satan and they are called his angels, Satan's angels in Revelation 12. And then two thirds stayed with God and they are under the authority of Michael, the archangel. And again, Michael in the book of Jude, uh, verse nine is mentioned. Michael is mentioned in Daniel 12. Uh, Michael is mentioned, I believe in Daniel 10, Michael is mentioned in the book of Revelation. He is the war prince of God. He is the, he's the main fighting angel or chief angel of warfare in, in, in heaven. Now, kind of track with me here because I know I'm going, going here and there and jumping over here because we're going to get to something here in a moment. When the angels fell from heaven, they fell in what we call ages past. God creates the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, God starts recreating the earth. And then verse 3, you know, there is supernatural life that appears. And then you keep going down and you see all the days of creation. Man is created on the sixth day. Angels were called sons of God and they failed, failed. A group of them failed. Cast out of heaven. Jesus said, I beheld Satan's lightning fall from heaven, Luke 10. Now, this is important to kind of comprehend this. What happened is God then creates a man in his image, in his likeness named Adam. And that comes from the, from the word for the reddish earth. And he puts the breath of life in him and Adam becomes a living soul. So Adam becomes, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, a body made of dust, a soul, and a spirit. Three parts all connected to one person. And we're the same way. We are all body, soul, and spirit. The spirit looks like us. If it would jump out of our body, it would look just like us. Be, a, be very young looking. It doesn't age the way our body does. Okay. Now, here's what, I want to sh here's what I want to tell you. This is very important. Adam is called in Luke's gospel, Adam, the son of God. When the angels fell, who were called Bene Elohim, and there's still angels that are classified sons of God if you'll read Job 1 Job 2, but when the angels fell, God then creates man in his image and in his likeness, gives him dominion over the earth and calls him in Luke's gospel, Adam, the son of God. So what we have happening here is very interesting because God wanted to have a family. Now let's jump ahead in time. He calls Israel, the son of my Israel, my son, and they are his son through the covenant of Abraham. So if we jump ahead and we go a little bit further in time, we discover that we come to the New Testament and when we accept Christ as Lord and Savior and we begin to follow him, the Bible says this, and here's the scripture. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, but it does not yet appear what we shall be. For when Christ will appear, we shall be like him, for we will see him as he is. At this present time, we are the sons and if you're female, daughters of God, which means that now that Jesus has died on the cross, now that he has redeemed mankind, we go to paradise. This is in 2 Corinthians 12 or the third heaven when we die. Now, I've had a lot of people say, Perry, what do you think my loved one is doing in paradise? Now, how are they there? Well, we buried them. Aren't they in the ground? No, that's their body. The body goes in the coffin. The body goes in the ground. The body is what returns to dust. Their soul and spirit came out of their body and is right now with the Lord in the third heaven. And it's waiting there till the resurrection of the dead, okay? Now, the only way for me to be able to tell you what they're doing, because Paul wrote about going to the third heaven, and he said, I saw things that I can't even talk about. You will have people, you will have individuals who have a life after death experience, meaning they, they, they died and were revived by a doctor, but they left their body, their spirit left their body for a period of time. And I've had the privilege over the years of interviewing many people that's had this happen. So I'm going to talk to you for a moment about this. I know of people that before they died, they, I'm talking about moments before they died, they would begin to see people appear to them who had gone to be with the Lord. Now, they were not communicating with the dead. I preached this one time and made some statements and some guy got on TV and started saying, Perry Stone talks to the dead. No, he does not. And these individuals do not talk to the dead because that's forbidden in scripture. But watch this. They would appear to them and the living person in the hospital near death could read the thoughts of that person. 
and that person could read their thoughts. Nothing, nothing ever said, nothing ever communicated. Now, I want to tell you a very bizarre story that relates to something like this about heaven. And when, when Moses, who had been dead 1,500 years, appeared to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses began to tell Jesus about his departure. Now, someone says, well, that was just a special thing. That doesn't happen. God can do whatever God wants to do. Now, remember, Moses appeared after being dead and buried for 1,500 years, and it wasn't Moses' body. He wasn't raised from the dead. It was his spirit, which had been in paradise at that time under the earth, and it was brought forth, and all, you know, all, oh, this is going to get too complicated. I, I don't want to get into there because I'll lose you, okay? So let me, just, let me just stick to this thought. So Moses is telling Jesus about his death. So what does Moses know? about Jesus' death because when Moses died, Jesus didn't even exist. Jesus didn't come into existence to 1,500 years later because in paradise, watch this, all these prophets are dying. All these people, Jesus was preaching for, you know, for three and a half years. They're dying and coming down and the soul and spirit can still communicate and they're going to the heart of the earth, to Abraham's bosom, Luke 16, and they're telling everybody, guess what's happening on earth? I just saw some, Lazarus was down there. Lazarus died, went to the Abraham's bosom in paradise, which at that time was in the heart of the earth. And then he came back from the dead. What do you think Lazarus is telling those people down there? He's saying, I see him, the Messiah, is there. Simeon the rabbi saw baby Jesus and said, this is the Messiah. Simeon dies. What do you think Simeon does? His soul and spirit comes out of his body. He goes down to paradise. He tells these people what's going on. The prophets are there. David is there. Samuel's there. He's Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. And they can tell all their stories of their prophecies. Okay, now watch. So Moses comes out and talks to Jesus and tells him something. All right. And this is in the Bible. I'll tell you one quick story. A woman from Alabama said this to me many years ago. She said, I died before, I'm sorry, my husband died. Before he died, he said to me, honey, I've left you some money in the house. So when I'm dying, you know, you, you'll have a lot of cash. Never, he died and never told her where it was. And she was just, oh, she was coming, needing money for bills. She said, God, what am I going to do? God, what am I going to do? Please help me, God. And one night, now this was a vision. I'm not telling you that he came back from the third heaven, came, but she saw a vision of him. And he walked in the house, he said nothing, and the closet door was open, and he looks at a third blanket, three blankets at the bottom, and points to her, smiles, and he's gone. Well, she actually got out of bed, and she saw all this. And she, of course, turns a light on. Someone said, how did, he, how did she see him without a light on? Because these things are supernatural. They're not natural. And she went to that third blanket, and as she pulled it down, Hundreds of dollars of bills fell down there. He'd hid the money there and she didn't know it. Now, you cannot explain that unless you say the Lord had mercy upon this widow woman to help her in her time of need and gave her a vision because let's go back to the New Testament. In the story of the transfiguration with Moses and Elijah, Jesus called it a vision, okay? My point is simply this. When we exit our body at death, we go to the third heaven in paradise. And when we go to the third heaven in paradise, there is activities taking place. Now, you're not just sitting there going, huh, you know, floating around meditating. People who have seen this area of heaven, the third heaven, and have gone out of their bodies at death and been revived by doctors have talked about seeing family members. Watch this. All of them are young looking. They died old, but they look like they're 25 or 30. That's point one. Seeing infants that were miscarried that now look like they're three, four, and five years old, but they actually, and I wish I had time to tell you, I wrote a book on, on the third heaven, taught, tell all these stories in detail. Can't, t can't, don't have time to really get into it on TV, but see infants that have died, see children that have died. One instance with Theo Carter, Theo Carter's boy got run over when he was about, I think, nine, 10 years old, shooting fireworks, truck hit him, killed him. Been dead for, that boy, child been dead for 40 years and Thea Carter's wife had heart surgery, died during the surgery, been dead 26 minutes. They're wheeling her down to the morgue. She comes back from the dead. She'd been to heaven. She saw the boy. The little boy had said to her, hi, mommy, recognized her as mother after 40 years. Then there's an old saint of God. Now, he's not old looking, but it was a man from their church that had died elderly. Now he's real spry and young looking. And he said, mommy, he's my guardian angel in heaven. He takes care of me. Now, that doesn't mean he became an angel when he died. I said that one time. People got all worked up. No, he was just saying, he protects me. He's the one that cares for me. 
And I'm telling you, there are so many real stories that it would, it would, you could write volumes of people that have had experiences where they've seen heaven the way Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. So, there's trees, rivers, houses, food, tree of life, fruit trees, mountains, animals, because we, ride, we come back uh, with Jesus Christ during the millennial reign riding on a white horse. So here's my point. Heaven is so much like earth, except it's in a perfected state. I've never seen a gate of pearl here. I've never seen streets of gold here. I've never seen a building that has 12 foundations with 12 different, different types of gemstones here. But we read in the book, the book of Revelation that the new Jerusalem has those gemstones. So this is what I really want to tell you in concluding that heaven is real. Paradise where the righteous souls go at death to wait the resurrection is real. And my, my goal for you, if I'm a minister of the gospel, this is my goal, is to see you find Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. To see you believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, conceived of the Holy Ghost, ministered, was crucified for your sins, was buried but raised from the dead. And because he said, because I live, you shall live also. So we will spend time when the Lord returns and the tribulation is taking place on earth. We will spend time with the Lord in heaven at a judgment, a place, a time of worship at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Do you, are you ready to meet him? Are you ready to go? Should, should he come, will you go with him? Those who have a redemptive covenant whose name is in the Lamb's book of life, who are faithfully, follow, faith, faithfully following the Lord, they will be a part of that great number that will be gathered together unto him. That number that Paul talked about, the general assembly of the church of the firstborn. And we want you there. There's a lot that's going to take place. Imagine meeting the patriarchs. Imagine seeing Jesus. Imagine standing at the throne of God with those living creatures. It's going to be wonderful. We'd love to see you there. And turn to Christ, repent of your sin, follow Him, and you will have your name in the registry of heaven, the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you for joining me. We've got a brand new offer. I'm very excited about this. And here's our announcer to, announcer to tell you about it. God bless you. Do you know the many secrets of paradise, the temporary home of the spirits and souls that have died in Christ, which is located in the third heaven? Harry Stone in his latest book, Secrets of the Third Heaven, delves into some of the most interesting, in-depth and mysterious questions ever asked about the third heaven. As a believer, can you answer these questions? At death, do all children go to heaven? Can God show you the actual day and hour when you will die? What is the difference between the human soul and spirit? Do departed saints now in heaven pray for those living on earth? In heaven, how will we communicate with people from different nations? What happens if your name is not written in the book of life? When your spirit leaves your body at death, are you naked or clothed? How is time counted in paradise, and are they aware of earthly events? Will a person's body be raised from dust at the resurrection? Will we remember family members in hell once we die and enter paradise? Do infant spirits age in heaven? Do they go to the same paradise as adults? Can a person repent of sins once their spirit is out of their body? These questions along with more unusual and difficult questions concerning death, angels, heaven, and paradise are answered in Perry's latest 220-page book, Secrets of the Third Heaven. This book is filled with stunning true stories and amazing biblical word studies. This offer also includes the two audio CD teaching, Standing at the Bema. You will one day stand face to face with Christ at a judgment called the Bema. What will you be judged for and how will you answer Christ when He exposes the idle words you spoke and your actions on earth? This two-hour teaching will explain from beginning to end what to expect and how you will be rewarded or stand ashamed. Perry's revelatory book and this informative audio teaching are available for your gift of just $35 or more. Call toll-free 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323 or order online at perrystone.org. You may also write Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee 37320. When ordering, ask for offer TH-135 and enclose your gift of $35 or more. If you have questions, this book and audio teaching has the answers. Order your set today. 
please get the book, Secrets of the Third Heaven, along with the offer of the Bema, which is the story of the judgment a seat of Christ. And don't forget the card that's in there that gives you access. Only if you get the book, you get access to testimonies on a backdoor internet area of people who have experienced life after death situations. And some have actually seen heaven. Uh, you know, when you, when you go through the times that we're going through right now and you, and you hear of people that are experiencing uh, death through this virus and people becoming sick and the entire world being shut down, you realize that the only two times the world has been shut down completely is in the days of Noah, and that was through a flood that occurred, and also in our time in which we're living. And I believe I have never, I'm just trying to think in my lifetime, I don't think I've ever seen the people that's number one, really concerned about what they see happening and its impact on them personally. Number two, I don't know that I've ever seen more interest in prophetic information. And there again, you have to make sure it's uh, sources that are grounded in the Word of God when you talk about Bible prophecy. And uh, number three, people that have been away from the Lord for a long time, we would call them backsliders, a term used in the, in the, in the scripture, and that are turning their heart back to God. And if any, if any good thing at all can come out of this, may it be that people that were lukewarm or become hot for God once again, may it be that people who were not interested in serving the Lord suddenly uh, turn their hearts back to Him. And uh, always remember what Joseph said in the book of Genesis. He looked at his brothers, he said, you meant this for evil, but God meant it for good to keep much people alive. And that's how I feel about this. God is gonna uh, bring something good out of this. He told, he, you know, the Lord spoke to me. I've, I've shared this with you once or twice, how um, a year ago, a revi revival would come through the lens of a camera. And I didn't know what that meant, really. I knew it meant over the internet, but Lord, I had no idea that we would be uh, uh, not permitted for weeks and weeks and weeks to have services. And we would have to depend on the internet to bring the word of God to people. And of course, our, our internet numbers have just gone through the roof. I've never seen anything like it. And I, I, I'm grateful for those of you who have tuned into the Tuesday night service at Omega Center International every Tuesday night at 6.30, ociministries.org, um, and watch that. And also our prayer center. I hope you've been able to view the prayer from the uh, New World Prayer Center. It's wonderful and the design of it is absolutely fantastic and uh, most of all the be, being able to pray for people is great and while you're inside and you're not able to get out as much like you normally do and all your favorite shops are closed take advantage of it iso.org and go look up the many courses that we have that go directly online that you can watch and learn the deep, deep things of God's Word. This is one time I can tell you that take, take advantage of this and fill yourself up with the Word of God through ISO.org. Also, follow me on Perry Stone Ministries' Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Be sure and subscribe to that so you can get every update that we're presenting and things coming in the future as well. Bless you and God bless all of you who are there and thanks so many of you that have written us and prayed for us and also those of you who have supported us in this season. We're so thankful for that as well. God bless you. We'll see you next week on The Manifest Telecast. Perry Stone invites you to join him for his 2020 Israel tour. The dates are November 23rd through December 2nd with an optional visit to Petra in the country of Jordan. Call 1-888-321-3629 or visit perrystone.org for more information and how to register. Seating is limited, so call today. Expand your understanding of Scripture. Advance your effectiveness in ministry. Earn certification for your knowledge of the Bible. International School of the Word. Developed by Perry Stone and Dr. Brian Cutshaw, ISO.org is the premier online Bible school with dozens of courses, hundreds of lessons, and thousands of students all over the world. Sign up for one of our exciting, affordable Bible courses and begin your journey at ISO.org today.